Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Wallet and how do I look? <laughs> this is no swag. I have conjunctivitis, so my eyes are swollen and red. <sighs> okay, let's begin with today's novel. This is going to be the last one in our African literature series. It is called Nervous Conditions. But before that, you must know what we are starting. Wallat Net Quiz Program. It will include questions from paper one and paper two. It will have three phases which will ultimately make you exam ready. Why? It will give you quizzes, mock tests and make things easier for you for the upcoming NET exam. Yes, if you're interested to join our NET quiz program, please call us on this number 93878-39871. And today I feel like laughing at myself. <laughs> Basically, this is not for style. This is for the condition that I'm having. So I'm literally looking at myself and... Um, it's funny. Okay, no worries. This is how life is. Very soon I'll be good. Hail and hearty. Let's start with the novel Nervous Conditions. Published in the year 1988, it is a semi-autobiographical novel by Sitsi Dangaremga. Sitsi is born in the year 1959 in southern Rhodesia, which is now called Zimbabwe. A little bit about Nervous Conditions Awards. It was awarded Commonwealth Writers Prize Africa section in the year 1989. And Nervous Conditions is the first book published by a black woman from Zimbabwe in English. The genre of Nervous Conditions is Buildings Roman because it will talk about the protagonist's growth psychological growth primarily, okay? And the setting is post-colonial Rhodesia during the 1960s. Of course, it has attained its freedom, but it cannot, it cannot stop the divisions and the society that has been created because of colonialism, right? And the narrator is first person narration. Who is the narrator? Tambu. Who is the protagonist? Tambu, okay? I'll tell you all about her. Now, the title of this novel, Nervous Conditions, is actually taken from the introduction of Franz Fanon's The Wretched of the Earth, 1961 book of Franz. And the introduction of this book was given by Jean-Paul Sartre, in which Sartre says for the colonized that their status is, quote, a nervous condition introduced and maintained by the settler amongst the colonized people with their consent. That is, the colonized has given this nervous condition to the colonized by their consent. I want to have nervous condition. I am colonized. You have colonized me. I want to have this nervous psychotic condition. This is what Sartre says. Okay. And this novel is the first in trilogy which Dangarengba has written. It is followed by two other novels as I've written, The Book of Not, published 2006, and This Mournable Boy, published recently in 2020. Let's now begin with nervous conditions. Get ready! Pum -pa -da. Tambu is the 14-year-old female protagonist of Nervous Conditions. She is a Shona. Shona is basically a language. They are people who belong to Bantu ethnic group in Zimbabwe, Africa. Tambu grows up listening to stories of her own history and of oppressed women in Zimbabwe from her grandmother. Here an easy theme, female oppression. Of course, it is discussed. Now let's start with setting where Tambu lives. It is called as Homestead. Homestead. Homestead is where Tambu lives with her family. The novel begins with the news of Namo's death. Who is Namo? Namo is Tambu's elder brother. He was about to return home after completing his term at a mission school. But while coming, he has died of a strange illness. The family is in mourning. They were waiting the arrival of their only son. But he's dead. Listening to this horrific news, Tambu is not devastated. Quote, I was not sorry when my brother died. Neutral, she thinks about the events before her brother's death. You know, actually, when she hears about her brother's death, she feels, okay, good. Now I don't have to cut the chicken. I don't have to prepare a meal for him. At least I'm saved from that. Oh, God. And let me tell you, she's the protagonist as well as the narrator. She is narrating herself that I was not sorry when my brother died. Flashback, she's thinking about the events before her brother Namo's death. 
Tambu belongs to a very poor family in Africa who cannot afford the education of their children. Her mother's name is Ma Shingai and father is Jeremiah. Ma Shingai is a hard-working mother who toils effortlessly so that her son can be educated. She does not want her daughter to be educated. She wants her son to be educated. She's very hard-working. But let me tell you, after Namo's death, Ma Shingai becomes an angry woman, a jealous woman okay let's talk about tambu's father jeremiah a little bit about his character analysis jeremiah is a lazy ignorant and superstitious father who is hardly concerned or bothered about his children's upbringing education or future However, a new character and a very important male character around him, nervous condition, actually revolves. This character is called Baba Mukuru. With the aid of Baba Mukuru, who is Tambu's uncle, Tambu's educated and powerful uncle. What does that mean? Baba Mukuru is Jeremiah's real brother. Understood? So, with the help of Baba Mukuru, Namo is sent to study. Okay, here theme of gender inequality, the son can go to study, but the, you know, daughter cannot. Tambu also wanted to study. Oh, she was very progressive. But as her mother tells her, quote, listen to what Ma Shingai tells Tambu, her daughter. And these days it is worse with the poverty of blackness on one side and the weight of womanhood on the other. Ava, ah, what will help you, my child, is to learn to carry your burdens with strength. Basically, the mother is telling her daughter that you will not be able to study. You will not be able to overcome this blackness as well as womanhood. So I'm suggesting you, my dear daughter, that you carry your burden with strength. But does this, you know, is this what Tambu wants in her life? No, she wants education. To sponsor her education, Tambu begins planting corn in her garden. Here, a very important symbol of garden is discussed, which represents Tambu's freedom as well as, you know, belonging to her community as well as outside her community. How belonging to her community? See, African people lived by the land, okay? So she's literally living by her land by growing corn. Now, how she's trying to grow out of her community, the money that she will earn by selling this corn, she wants this money to spend on her education. So this means she wants to leave the traditional African illiterate methods and become educated. Easy, easy. Now, Mr. Matimba, who is Tambu's teacher, took her to an urban market to help her sell her corn produce. There, a white couple took pity on Tambu and gave her some money to begin her education. These scenes of, you know, white being benevolent towards the blacks is shown in the novel, Nervous Conditions. Now, let's change the scene and listen to this. Tambu's relatives return from England after educating themselves. Who are these relatives? Baba Mukuru. Baba Mukuru is Tambu's uncle. My Guru is Tambu's aunt. That is Baba Mukuru's wife. Chido is a boy. Nyasha is a girl. So Chido and Nyasha are Tambu's cousins. That is, they are Baba Mukuru's and My Guru's children. Easy. These four relatives return from England and they receive a very hospitable welcome from Tambu's family. Surprisingly for Tambu, her cousins, Chido and Nyasha, can no longer converse in their native tongue, that is Shona. After going to England, they have embraced the English culture so, so easily and so comfortably that they call English as their first language and they are very hesitant in speaking their native language, Shona. My guru hesitates in letting her children participate in traditional dances and rituals. Here, theme of colonial influence and modern versus traditional is discussed. After the unexpected death of Namo, Baba Mukuru suggests to his three siblings who are there at homestead with him that they should let Tambu take her brother's place, which means now Tambu should join the mission school because Namo is no more. And this is the dream of Tambu, remember? She is jubilant. She is happy to hear this news. This takes us to another scene from the novel. Tambu moves away from homestead to study. Where does she go? She goes to stay with her uncle and auntie. Why? Because her uncle, Baba Mukuru, is actually the headmaster of the mission school where Namo studied and where now Tambu will study. 
Tambu feels very happy with her current position in life. She lives at her aunt and uncle's home, which is on the grounds of her mission school. They give her Western clothes to wear and make her feel at home. As I told you, Baba Mukuru is the headmaster of this mission school. Okay. Now, during this time, Tambu develops a very close friendship with her cousin Naisha. Although she notices that Naisha is very progressive, very outspoken, and also Naisha and her father, Baba Mukuru, argue often. A daughter argues very often with her father. Is it out of modern influence? We don't know. We'll come to find out very soon. Her aunt, my guru, as I told you, is very well educated. Now, what about Tambu's studies? She has left homestead, come to Baba Mukuru uncle's house to study. So how are her studies going on? We should know this. Tambu studies diligently and passes her school term with good grades. At the end of the school term, like in between the school term, she, Naisha and the white children attend a dance together. Now, because of her traditional roots, Tambu does not want to, you know, do this modern dance. But Naisha is very excited. And when Naisha's father sees that Naisha is practicing the bold dance moves with one of the boys, Baba Mukuri, Mukuru gets very angry and accuses his daughter of immorality. What happens because of this? A bitter fight ensues and Naisha hits her father. She literally attacks her father and he threatens to kill her, saying that a child cannot hit her father. Here, the theme of patriarchy and, of course, too much modern influence is discussed. After this scene, Tambu tries to calm her cousin Naisha down, but Naisha distances herself from everyone in her family in the coming weeks. Note, please note here, Naisha is confused about, about her identity and about the hybrid influence of life in England and now in Rhodesia, Africa. She does not know where does she belong. Is it because of her upbringing? Is it because of colonialism that Africa has faced? You tell me. Now, let's go change the setting. The setting is homestead. Homestead, you know, is Tambu's home. During the vacation time between school terms, Tambu goes to meet her family at the homestead with Baba Mukuru's family. My guru is expected to do the house chores here. Why? Because she's the senior most wife in the family. Here, theme of orthodoxy is discussed. Baba Mukuru, as the head of the family, issues his decisions on various subjects at homestead. What are these decisions? I'll tell you. Number one, Lucia, who is considered to be a witch-like sister of Tambu's mother, has an ongoing affair with Take Sure. Take Sure is Jeremiah's cousin. Basically, these are very minor characters in the novel. Even if I wouldn't have put them here, it would not have mattered. But just to tell you more detail in the story, I thought I'll add them. So Lucia and Take Sure have an affair. They are living at Homestead. Whereas, you know, Take Sure has many wives. He is so lazy, he cannot even provide for them, yet he wants a concubine in Lucia. Second thing, so Baba Mukuru agrees that Lucia and Take Sure can stay together at homestead. This is the first decision he makes. And the second decision, Baba Mukuru orders that Tambu's parents, that is Jeremiah Papa and Ma Shingai Mama, must have a Christian wedding to sanctify their relationship. They already are wedded. They have children. Tambu, they have Namo, who is no more. But now Baba Mukuru warns that Jeremiah and Ma Shingai should have a Christian wedding so that their relationship becomes more holy. Imagine. Now, time passes. Tambu's mother gives birth to a son at the mission hospital, which is near to where Tambu studies. But all this time, Tambu distances herself from her parents and homestead and pays more attention to her education. She always wanted to escape her restrictive life at homestead. When she refuses to attend the wedding of her parents, please listen, this is very important. The wedding is about to happen. Tambu refuses to attend this Christian wedding of her parents, which makes Baba Mukuru so angry that he beats Tambu and allots her maid's duties for two weeks. But she does not attend her parents' re-wedding, okay? My guru, 
the wife of Baba Mukuru, increasingly fights with her husband over the lack of affection and respect she gets in her household. Result, she leaves him for some time to stay with her son, Chido. Chido is living separate, okay? Now, at the school, what happens? Let's return to the mission school where Tambu, Naisha, they all are studying. The school of which, uh, you know, Baba Mukuru is the headmaster. Okay, what happens at this school? Let's Let's listen. Final exams are around the corner when few nuns arrive at Tambu's mission school and conduct a test. Tambu performs well in this test and is therefore offered a scholarship to study at the esteemed Sacred Heart Convent School. Now, listening to this, Baba Mukuru is reluctant to send her away. But he eventually agrees. Naisha, when she listens about this news, gets colder towards her cousin because she's upset that very soon her best friend and cousin will leave her alone in the company of her unsympathetic father, Baba Mukuru. Before joining the convent, Tambu visits her family once where she finds her mother terribly ill. Remember, her mother just delivered a baby boy. And Lucia, Mashingai's sister, is trying to nurse her back to health. Tambu does not feel any affection here. She understands there is nothing much left for her at the homestead. She grows apart from her mother. And now she reaches the convent school. Right? Sacred Heart Convent School. Tambu here shares a crowded room with other African girls. But this does not affect her because she pays attention only to her education and her studies and her progressiveness in life. Now, in between all this, once she visits Naisha and she's shocked to see her condition. Please listen to this, guys. This is important. Naisha has become frantically thin. She's suffering from a severe eating disorder. Why? This is because of the self-hatred and dangerously negative body image that Naisha has created for herself. And this tells us that in nervous conditions, Naisha is the symbol of a person who has tried to embrace modernity, change, enlightenment, self-improvement, but at the cost of giving her mental peace, right? And looking at this disturbing psychotic condition of Naisha, Tambu fears that she is also succumbing to the negative colonial influence. Her other cousin Chido, we should know about Chido also, Chido Baba Mukuru and my guru's son. You know, Chido has entered into a relationship with a white girlfriend, which was not accepted at that time. No, no, no. So my guru mama is very disappointed. See, basically, educated mostly among white colonists, Chido has become used to a life of luxury. Chido is not very close to his family. He's not affected by what is happening in his family, okay? And this takes us to the end of nervous conditions. How does nervous conditions end? Looking at her family and relatives, Tambu tells herself to be strong. How? She contemplates. She broods about her life and she decides. First, she will not give herself to negative thoughts. Second, she will question the world around her and check its overwhelming influences over her. Third, she will not let others limit her potential and she will move from being an impoverished girl in Africa to a progressive, educated woman. With this, Tambu ends her story, how, quote, quietly, unobtrusively and extremely fitfully, something in my mind began to assert itself, to question things and to refuse to be brainwashed bringing me to this time when I can set down this story. It was a long and painful process for me, that process of expansion. Isn't it beautiful? You know, these matters now for us may be just trivial. Education, uh, having a white girlfriend, leaving the traditions and rituals behind. But believe me, these are not simple things. You know, if as a girl... You are not given education. If you have nothing in your life except for house chores and listening to what others say, I will tell you it is going to be a terrible life. Yes. And also in nervous conditions, they have told us that how modernity, if excessive, can lead to self-damage. They showed it in Naisha. 
Then in Tambu's case, they said that how she is embracing modernity, but by keeping a check on her mental health. Yes, this is nervous conditions. And this is Hina which con with conjunctivitis today. <laughs> and Kala Chashma, thank you so much for being with me. It was lovely being with you. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.